Well, hello. So I thought uh, what I'd do a little differently, you know, I've made a lot of jokes about the banjo and all those kinds of things. But the truth is, I think it's a really neat instrument and I like it very much. It's, uh, there are so many good things about it, honestly. Uh, and I'm not joking in this case. Uh, it, they're easy to make. You can even make them out. Of, I mean, you can make a pretty decent sounding instrument out of a stick and a cookie can, uh, if you know what you're doing. And they sound just fine. And you can worship with them and sing with them and all those kinds of things. Uh, a perfect, really, poor man's instrument. The original ones uh, that came from us through the Africans uh, that were slaves were gourds originally and all those kinds of things. And because it does originate from Africa, and, and then it just got more complicated. But it's a nice instrument. It's very clean, articulate sounding and melodic when everything's tuned up just right. And, uh, and the real beauty of it, though, uh, in my opinion, is just how easy they are to play. And uh, I want to kind of do uh, some banjo lesson videos and now don't stop because uh, you'll, you'll learn some interesting things about that process, not just for banjos, but all kinds of instruments. And, um, but today I, I thought I'd uh, show you how anybody can play a banjo, even if you're all thumbs, and, and do a little uh, lesson on playing an old hymn, How Great Thou Art, uh, and, and you could learn it right away. And, and just do that. Now to do that uh, for this video, oh, also at the end of the banjo lesson will be uh, the final building clip of the hybrid banjo I'm building out of flooring uh, where I stain the skin uh, with wood stain. And so you can watch that and see how I stain a goat skin, which I had never done before. It actually came out quite good and I was very happy with it. And then next week, uh, in the next banjo lesson, at the end of that, I'll have a clip of the banjo I just built and play it a little bit so you can hear how it sounds and so forth. This particular instrument is my plectrum banjo, and you can kind of see this is a personal build also. Tom Stimmerman helped me with this one. Um, there's a beautiful uh, bird's eye maple on there. The whole thing's made out of maple, and this was Tom's uh, genius, my favorite wood hoarder. His, his genius um, was to, to make tin sections, and then we routed it round, and you can see then we had this rim that we used for the, to hold the hooks, and you can see the tin sides inside. Um, and, and then, of course, then I had, fat, I, I had a neck, got a neck, and then... Uh, Put it on there and it's a double rod system this particular one um, this is my workhorse uh, there's so many good things about a plectrum banjo i can use a pick with it I use finger picks i I'm, i can use my hand which i'm using my thumb today and inside of this one particular one has electronics it has a special banjo humbucker made by fishman uh, it's the Probably the best thing I've ever heard for reproducing the banjo sound. In fact, um, <clears throat> I think uh, the, the one where I'm playing, it's called Be Natural something. Uh, I do some banjo melody on one of the videos. That's actually coming through an amp. That's the banjo sound uh, through this humbucker. So uh, just interesting stuff. But this one... Um, <clears throat> is a really super versatile. Now what it's missing that most banjos have, or a lot of them, is it's missing that short chanterelle string that's tuned to a high drone G. Um, doesn't have that. The history behind plectrums was that when Jazz Age was coming, banjo players started taking that string off so they could do some chording and, and rhythms that were stronger, and it came to be that. Now the normal tuning for a banjo for a plectrum is actually the old banjo tuning. It, it starts with, it goes C, uh, let me think, C, D, B, D, and uh, which is a little different. Um, but I've tuned this one to open G for our purposes. When I first learned to play the banjo, I learned the plectrum style tuning, or what's called the old tuning, um, and then uh, 
the open G became more popular and has become a standard banjo tuning, which is actually a good tuning for what we want to do. And it was an easy transition for me to make because it's pretty much the same as a dobro. So that's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to show you some things on the frets and, and you could count, you know, we're counting up to the fifth fret, which is right here. Um, mine has a lot of inlay, but usually it'll be your second or first inlay depending on your instrument. So that's the fifth fret. You want to memorize that and the seventh fret. And they're usually dots on the side of the neck that'll tell you. So there's the fifth fret. You can barely see it. And there's the seventh fret. That's all we have to learn. Now, if you're all thumbs, I'll do the best I can with this. Get in position for thumb playing. You can play with just thumbs. Oh, Lord, my God. When I am awesome. So we're going to learn to do like that, only you can use your fingers. I tend to like my third finger because I can kind of lock my the saddle of my hand and my finger and get a good grip. Um, that's just how I like to do it. That's all we're going to do. So use your, if you only have thumbs, use your thumb. But otherwise, use your ring finger. And so your first chord to learn is G. We're going to do this song in G, and it goes like this. That's the G chord. Everybody can instantly learn the one chord on a banjo without any effort whatsoever. So then if you go up to the fifth fret, there's your C chord. And then if you go up to seventh fret, there's your D chord. With those three chords, you can play a lot of old time songs. I meant to show it. I'll show it next week. My wife has a hymn, uh, a book called Three Chord Hymns, and uh, it's, I do recommend it if you can find it online or something. I think she got it at Amazon. That's where everybody gets everything. But uh, Three Chord Hymnal, and uh, it, it does it mostly in C or G. And when I introduce that book, when we get to that, I'll, I'll eventually show you how to transpose from C to G if you need to, and vice versa. But that's down the road. So today, just play along with me if you like. And if you don't have a banjo, make some markings on a broom and just practice, you know, on the, it, it might sound better than my banjo playing. Uh, but uh, in any case, um, let's just work through that song. I'll do some verses, whatever ones I can remember. And uh, you'll see the chord. I'll post the chord and it's coming up. Whenever I change chords, there'll be a letter, and that letter will represent the chord. So open is G, fifth is C, and seventh is D. And that's all we're going to use for this lesson for How Great Thou Art. Oh, Lord my God, when I am an awesome wonder, Kiss can take 
Did a little flub at the end there, so it's okay to mess up. But I will make sure it's the right. I made sure it was the right chord there for you the whole time. And it's that simple. So next week um, we'll do the same song. I'll show you a little more, another chord that adds a little extra flavor and leads into the C. So um, easy, easy stuff. The next chord you learn will take one finger. So if you work this week, we're going to practice with that finger and then we'll press one string with one finger and it makes it nicer. And then as we go along, I'll start showing some chord replacements for just the one finger position so you can mix it up and put them together. And um, we'll even talk about some of what I do with my thumb. Now you want to become, you know, the next Bella Flack or Old Scruggs or someone like that. Uh, this isn't your channel. This is how to learn to play something if you've never played it before and would like to worship the Lord with it. And, you know, people say, what do you do with your hand? I kind of throw my hand at it and see what happens. To be all completely honest, that's what happens uh, mostly. It's kind of a hybrid thing I do uh, between how I was playing dobro and doing the mandolin. It's a weird thing, really. Um, so it's, it's kind of, it's frailing, but it's a little different. Um, and I'm not the best at it. There are people much better that can teach the three-fingered style. They can teach the frailing. I think they'll, they're much more mechanical and precise and do a much better job than I would. But for beginners, this is perfect. So the next, what's coming up next week is I will show you that you can do that. We will do that chord. I will also show you that it can be done on, on a, the same approach can be taken on a regular six string guitar. It can be done on a ukulele. I'll do it on a mandolin, um, a dobro, which is naturally tuned that way. Um, uh, I don't know if I think of anything else I can do that to, I'll do it. And, and so you can see if you get something with strings and you get it tuned to an open tuning, whether it's an open C, open G, open F, you can do songs. We're shooting for the open G uh, in these videos. Now, what's following immediately here is just the clip of me staining. This is called the skin. This is a very, this is a special Renaissance head, but I had a goat skin on the new build and um, still do. And I stained it with wood stain to make it look darker and more natural because they bleach those. So I just show you how I do that and it's very short. So we'll see you next week. Practice and learn to worship with it. Whatever instrument you have. If you don't have a banjo, I'm going to show you a lot of possibilities next week that could all be set up 
to play just the way we play. Anyone can play an instrument good enough to worship and enjoy it very much. So we'll see you next I week. I know this is kind of weird, but I forgot to mention the tuner and I wanted to, to mention that real quick. So um, I use an app. I've mentioned this before when I did the mountain banjo, but for banjo lesson, I want to mention it. Uh, to tune to an open standard uh, standard banjo G tuning, you get the guitar tuna, and there it opened up to the banjo head already, and it's it's got a green guitar pick for a logo, um, so there's the open G tuning. You want to use that. Um, it also has op guitar tuning, so you can have an open uh, G uh, six string guitars, all kinds of things um, in that. So if you're figuring out how to tune a banjo, that's a great way. Now here's so, the sting. Time to do something with my natural banjo skin, natural high. So this is, these are like between nine and ten dollars Amazon. It's a thin goat skin that's been bleached. And as I've been working on the banjo build and talking about uh, making it, giving it some darker tones, I'm going to experiment with staining. I've already experimented on the back side along the edge here. I did a little Old English and I did a little of the natural, the red mahogany. I think I've decided to go with the red mahogany. It'll give it a dark tone. I'm going to stain the rough side first and then um, flip it over and stay in the smooth side and the smooth side is the side that goes out towards the strings as a general rule you there's you know I've seen guys put the rough side out because they want a little more texture or something um, I may even do that I have no idea but uh, isn't it nice to know I don't know what I'm doing I'm just guessing as I go so um, I I've read up on it and watched some videos and when I was done it was as clear as mud so I've decided to go for it. Now I'm wearing rubber gloves because here's how you figure out if a stain will work on goat skin. If it will stain your hide, it will stain a banjo hide. There you go. So if you could, if it stains your fingers, it'll stain this. If it works on your hide, it'll work on the goat's hide. So my big scholarly solution is to just start rubbing it on here. And then uh, after I rub it on here, I'm going to rub it off. And you're seeing it here. I've never done this before. We're just going for it. And uh, it might turn out to be ugly. It might not. It's going to end up on the banjo. And uh, if I absolutely hate it, um, then I can always put a new one on it. Uh, you're not really risking that much when you talk about a $10 goat skin. So I've rubbed it on and we're rubbing it off. And uh, aren't I doing a great job here? So <clears throat> I think I'm liking it. Honestly, I think with the tiger wood and everything, that's the back side. Uh, this is the front side. I'm going to rub a little on the front too. And the idea is I'm going to leave this overnight because to install it, I have to soak it in water for 20 minutes, warm water. So I want the stain to dry in there and, and, and thoroughly soak in because I, I expect I could possibly lose some of the colorization. Um, well, I like the smooth side. And uh, I could lose some of it as I soak it and so on and so forth. So I don't know, but here's, here we are staying in a banjo hive for the very first time. And you can see it's super complicated. I'm dipping a paper towel in a red mahogany penetrating stain made by Minwax. And I'm rubbing it all over the skin. And now that it's rubbed all over the skin, I'm rubbing it off with a clean paper towel like that. I'm very happy, I think, with this outcome. If it, if it stays like this or even gets a little lighter, it won't matter. 
I'm going to like it on the banjo. I'm really look, now hoping it holds. Uh, I don't know I, that I gave myself enough tack room in this new banjo build in terms of the gluing and tacking inside the framework for the skin. But there it is, all stained. Um, and yeah, it's it's kind of streaky and it's different colors and different spots and it's darker and um, I think that's going to be just a really fun look when I get it on the banjo and strings and all of that. And um, <clears throat> I haven't even looked at the set of Aquila strings I've ordered that came, um, but I can tell you on the <clears throat> on the other set that is on the mountain banjo, I use a medium. I just like a little more tone and power in them. I use a medium and the D string on the medium is brown instead of white. The other strings are white. So there's a fun thing. It goes with everything else we're doing. So there it is. I'm just going to leave it laying here on this cardboard. And, uh, you know, in a couple days, we'll be putting that on. So thank you for showing interest. And that's how to stain a banjo skin from my perspective. And honestly, I don't see any reason to make it harder than that. I think that uh, that was easy. And I think it's going to look really cool on there. Thanks.